all alarm and metric data needs to be displayed within USM. And in order to do this, they must adhere to the new TNT2 data model. This is also known as the NIS2 data model. And this was created with several goals in mind to create a central database containing descriptions of every metric that the probes collect, to create a central inventory of devices being monitored, and to create a central inventory of components of the devices being monitored, like disk network interfaces, etc. This also allows for the localization of metrics with the descriptions and units. The TNT2 data model consists of three basic types. A device is an IP addressable system, a configuration item, is a component of an IP addressable system, for example, a disk, and metric that is data that the probe collects that is associated with a configuration item, like free space on a disk, for instance. On the screen, you can see on the left, we have IP addressable systems, and on the right, we have our configuration items and the metric data. In order for probes to send their QoS and alarm messages and have them linked correctly in USM, you need to first create a configuration item object. And this is basically an association between a configuration item definition, your configuration item itself, and the IP addressable system, which is the host that you're either running on or that you are monitoring from your probe. Now, the CI type, which is the configuration item definition, is stored in the CM configuration item definition table. And in there, you can see that you have a CI type and a CI description, as well as a parent for the CI type. And these basically denote the tree view that's going to be displayed within USM. So you can notice that in our example, we're using system.file. And if you look at the middle section, you can follow it down. You can see system. Underneath system is file. Underneath file is then our file size test.log CI. Now, Associated with this definition is also a CI type, which is a numeric value, which in our case is just one for system, 10 for file. So 1.10 is what we will use in our code, but what actually gets displayed within USM is system.file, as you can see. Upon successful creation of our configuration item object, it actually puts an entry into the CM configuration item table. In here, the CI definition will be given an ID. It's associated with our IP addressable system, so the device ID is in there, and it holds the CI type of 1.10 in our case, which we know as far as the tree view within USM is equal to system file. And we've got our CI name, which in our case here is file size test.log. If this definition already existed, a handle or a pointer to that CI ID would just be returned. Now that we have our CI defined, the metrics can now be associated to it. Each CI can have multiple metrics, so you need to make this association when you send the QoS and alarm messages to have them show up in USM. All of the metrics are defined in the CM configuration item metric definition table. As you can see here, we are displaying a list of some of the metrics that are defined underneath the CI type of 1.10, which we know is the one that we're using, which is system.file. So here you can have if you look at your metric description, you can see file number, file size in kilobytes, file size in megabytes, and so on. What we'll be using in our example today will be number 18, which is file size in bytes. In order to reference this metric ID, you have to use the actual met underscore type value. So when we send an alarm or a QS message, we have to use the value 1.10 colon 18. Using the code wizard, you can get example code on how you can send alarms and QS messages using the new TNT2 data model. And the only real difference is from what you were allowed to do before to what you have to do now is you have to create configuration item, pass it the values, and then you associate that configuration item with your NIM alarm and your NIM QS messages, as well as the metric ID that you wish to send. So to do this, select the language of Java, check the add example on how to generate an alarm and add example on how to generate quality of service, change the name if you wish to save this and generate the code. And you will get what you see in front of you now. And in the do it method, there's the examples of your NIM alarm and your NIM QoS. Here is the code that I used for the example that we were looking at earlier. So in USM, we had the size of the file increasing 
and then we also had an associated alarm with that message. So here you can see that for my configuration item, I'm defining the item and the CI type I've got is 1.10, which we know is system.file. And then I'm giving it the file name, which is the file size test.log file. And I'm not passing it an IP addressable system. And if you don't pass it by default, it will use the system that you're currently running on. And that's absolutely fine with me. If I was monitoring um, a remote file or a remote something, I would actually specify an IP addressable system in that last field, but you don't have to. It defaults to the server that you're running on, so that's fine. So I've created my CI, and then in my NIM alarm, I then reference the CI object in the, the second to last parameter, as well as the metric ID, which we know was 1.10 colon 18 for the file size in bytes. And I do exactly the same for the NIMQOS. In NIMQOS, I reference the CI object that I've created, and I put in my metric ID, which is uh, system.file and then file size in bytes. So uh, 1.10 colon 18, and then I've got QS files, so basically my QS definitions. And I just um, send that off, and it gets associated in the TNT2 data model, and then those values will then be displayed within USM. So in this example, in the NIM alarm, I'm basically keeping an eye on the size of the file. If it's greater than my threshold, which is 1,000 bytes, I send an alarm basically saying that file size exceeded the threshold. And then if the file size goes below that threshold, I then clear that alarm so it goes. But as well as that, I'm also sending QoS messages every five minutes just to say the size of the file. So we can now switch back to USM and see that information that we were looking at earlier. Here in USM, you can see that it's nicely displayed. We have our metric displayed within USM. We have our file size count that's incrementing. And here we have the associated alarm with that file. In this lesson, you have learned about the TNT2 data model and how to create a new configuration item and associate it with an existing CI type definition, as well as linking it to an IP addressable system. You now know how to use the CI object and the metric ID when sending your QoS and alarm messages. This concludes the TNT2 lesson.